And he found one thing and it's a converter code. And if you want to see dealers suffering, just But it's sometime, sometime, let's go. Before everyone in the comments yells at me when I walk past this truck right here. All right, so I got one of the drivers here. Curious to know, what is the nastiest thing that you've seen in some of these cars that you've, you've got into to drive? Well, last week we brought in a 40 Conline van, a 150. Yeah. All right, here's a Jeep. This thing is way too green for us not to check this thing out and to put it on the video. So it is a 2017 Rubicon. It's got 26,000 miles on it. It's very rare for us to see a Jeep like this. That's a 2017 and only, only have, I've already forgot how many miles I had on it, and only have 26,000 miles. That's very low miles. So this, this is gonna bring probably a lot of money, it, as it should. Uh, outside body looks good, looks good. Frame looks good, I don't see any rust. Um, tires, wheels, fantastic, everything's great. And this is very green. That's so green, look how green that is. So Jeep said the announcement was airbag deployed. It means it's probably been, means it's been in a wreck at some point. We're trying to start $28,000, no bid so far. All right, inside, inside, yep. Inside looks just as good as the outside seats. Seats are fantastic, all of them, no rips, no wear and tear. This is, this is a brand new Jeep. Almost. It seems like a brand new Jeep. Even the carpets. Like, I mean, a little bit of vacuuming, but I mean, they look, they look almost brand new. Yeah, this will bring, this will bring lots and lots and lots of money, I think. But we'll check it out. Drop it all the way down to $15,000. They got bids now. Lots of bids coming in, up to $16,000. It's going to roll out. We're still bidding on it. Up to $17,000. Said it takes twenty-two thousand dollars to even call. All right, that Jeep, that green Jeep, it brought twenty-one thousand dollars, and they put it on an if. They got one bidder to come up, and uh, but they said it's still so far apart, probably not getting done. So we didn't realize this until after we saw the footage, but that Jeep has run at this auction about three months ago. So what probably happened was, okay, it didn't bring the amount of money they wanted it to bring three months ago. They no-sold it. And then to get creative, they tried it at a different auction. Turns out that in a downtrending market, it doesn't matter what auction you take it to, it's not going to bring the amount of money that they had in it. They're going to take a big haircut on this Jeep, and we see that now they're bringing it back to this auction to try to get the kind of money out of it that they want to. But you know what? It usually doesn't work out that way. First money, best money. All right, he's checking all the AC, sunroof, uh, power windows, things like that. And uh, we are hooking up our scanner to it. So what this thing is right here, and what it does is it reads the OBD2, which throws any problem codes. It reads the engine, reads the transmission for us. So we can try to find something that's wrong with it. And he found one thing, and it's a converter code. Let's see if it's a ghost code. Nope. Ghost code. But it's just a pinning code, so it's not throwing the check engine light on. Um, which means it can, it's, it's probably just one because it's been sitting for a long time and uh, it threw the O2 sensors a little hiccup or something and then said the converter's not reading the way that it should. Um, so we can generally on those, we see those a lot. Uh, converter codes we see all the time um, because uh, cars sit out here. I mean, these they literally sit and they're not driven. And before that got here, it was a trade-in. So it sat on the dealer lot for quite a while and it's bad for these cars to just sit and not be driven in that case there's probably some ungobusted fuel that sat in the converter and it's not getting blown out it's not getting cleaned out and that's why that cur uh, that code's sitting there what we can do is if we buy that car we can get it back to our lot and we can throw some fuel treatment into it and uh, we can get the converter hot and we can get it to clean out the system doesn't always work but a lot of times it does it does not mean that the converter's bad it just means that that car's probably sat for a while so Hopefully we won't have to replace the converter if we buy something like that because it's a $400 to $800 fix. Um, but uh, usually it's not the case. Usually we can clean them out and, uh, and they're good just because in our situation, these cars are just sitting out here and they're not driven and they need to be driven. All right, we can check this one. It's a 2011 uh, GMC Yukon. It's got 170,000 miles. Uh, hood is pretty rough. I don't know if that's just dirt. That might just be just dirt. I don't, I don't want to touch it. 
I keep touching stuff and my hands get all dirty and I didn't bring my hand sanitizer. So we're just, we're going to try not to touch things today. Um, overall body looks, looks okay. It's a Denali. It's a Denali package. Um, I don't see any dents or dings. It's not, uh, the clip, I, I'm about, I can touch this. It's not, it's not that dirty. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, you got a little, uh, flat in the wind right there, but overall, overall it's okay. All right, here's the Yukon. Try to start at $10,000. We've got no bids coming in, no bids. Down to 9500 Down to 9000 Check the inside. Inside's pretty rough. Large people drive these cars a lot. I'm not trying to stereotype anyone who drives a Yukon, but, but, you see a Yukon, a lot of times you'll see a large person, and this is the telltale sign of a large person who drives who owned a Yukon because this side right here is very worn and now I'm touching things where people's butts have been okay anyway that side not very worn this side very very worn because as their weight shifts this way to get out it pushes all of the cushioning down it creates pressure cracks this is how they get out they just slide out of the car and that's what happens we've got uh, some tearage uh, back seats Back seats look better than the front seats. Overall, it's it's okay, it's okay, but um, some some rust spots here and there. But we'll we'll check it and see see what a dealer will pay for this today. Eighty five hundred, down to eight thousand. All right, his finger up like that. He's asking for seven thousand, but uh, dropped it down to four thousand dollars. We got a bid. It's going to roll out. We're still trying to get bids on it. So four thousand dollars, no bids, no bids. Actually, one bid, one bid for $4,000. All right, he said, I don't think so, $4,000. It takes $7,500 to buy it. They're nowhere close. No sell. All right, so here's something interesting right here. This is a car, and it came in to this auction. It says R&D. What that means at the auction, that means ride and drive. That means that this dealer says that this car is good to go, and it's even given kind of a, a warranty on this vehicle. So if it's sold ride and drive through the auction, after I buy the car, then I can literally ride and drive it out of the auction and uh, check the motor and transmission. And if either one of those is not good, then I can bring it back into the auction, say, hey, look, it's sold to me with a with a ride and uh the the transmission slipping and i can uh i i am at that point i don't have to buy the car or uh if we've already paid for it we can get our money back whatever all right and before everyone in the comments yells at me when i walk past this truck right here it's not for sale it's not at the auction uh, it's got a, a dealer tag on it somebody drove it here so yes yes i would like to know what a dealer would pay for that and i'd like to see what it brings uh but we're not going to get to because it's not running all right, let's check this one out. This is a 2014 Corolla. It's got 92,000 miles on it. Um, outside body from the front looks okay. It's got this little, I guess they had the, uh, oh, what do you call those things? The Just the little hood cover or whatever. And you can see the line that always gets left when they uh, when they take it off. Hood cover. It's not a hood cover. Somebody, somebody put in comments what it is. Um, it's got some dents and dings. Actually, body, body's pretty rough. That's paint, that's peeling, so this thing's set out in the sun. Sun just baked the paint. But you can see all around here that it's it's in, in pretty decent shape. All right, here we go. Trying to start up $6,500, no bids. Drop it down all the way down to 4,000, and got bids rolling in. Other way up to 5,000 already. All right, inside, let's check this out. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty gross. It's great. Oh, and I'm touching it. Why do I always touch it? I always touch it. Need some hand sanitizer, some gloves, something. Look at that. Oh, nasty, 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 nasty. Gross, gross, gross. All right, this thing's this thing's pretty rough. So we'll see what a dealer will pay for this, even in its condition right now. Up to 5,500. It's rolling out. We're still bidding on it. Still bidding on it. Up to 5,700 dollars. Up to 6,000. 6,000. All right, it's out of here. Rolls out of here. Still bid on it. Up to sixty-four hundred dollars. They sold it. Sixty-four hundred. Sold it. Sixty-four hundred. 
All right, uh, that Corolla I just uh, watched, that might have been a bonus Corolla. I don't think that's the Corolla I had on my list. I'll find out in a second, but if it's not, then you just got an extra one. So there you go. All right, no, uh, here's the one that we were uh, going to check. So we're, uh, we'll watch this one go through. So you got a bonus one. And uh, it's, it's hectic. It's, uh, you can hear it going on. It's hectic in here, so it's hard for me to keep up with these cars that I'm showing to you. So um, if you could please subscribe to the channel because this is a lot of work. Uh, but I'm going to show you this one when it rolls in. All right, bids rolling in. Bids rolling in. Up to $6,300. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400. $6,400.
probably not stored uh, very well probably not garage kept and it was baked um, in heat and that's what causes oh there's some bad paint see what i'm what i'm saying it's hard to tell because from over here it just kind of looks like that's uh the pollen actually just clumping around in a certain area but if you get up close to it you can see that the paint is actually coming off and it's been baked off on that side but anyway we'll go inside and check this and see what a dealer uh pays for it it's in rough shape so just keep that in mind when we're getting the price on it Dropped it all the way down to three hundred dollars. It's at four hundred bucks. I don't. I don't understand. Four hundred dollars without it. They put it on a phone call. That's not getting done. There's no way. All right, so I got one of the drivers here for uh, for this uh, auction. I'm curious to know what is the nastiest thing that you've seen in some of these cars that you've you've got into to drive. Well, last week we brought in a 40 Conline van, a 150. Yeah, and it was a was a work van, and it was completely had nothing in it except a pile of <laughs> somebody walked by and <laughs> in the back of the, the van, <laughs> and when I opened it up. The aroma was just oh <laughs> gross 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 all right thank you all right here's what i get to deal with today i am at north carolina dmv in our state's capital which is raleigh north carolina i have to come here to renew my dealer's license that's what i'm here doing today it's about two and a half hours away i got here at 10 o'clock this morning 10 o'clock this morning i got here drove two and a half hours got here at 10 o'clock repeating myself i'm frustrated hope you can see that on the camera um anyway it is now three ish um my number hasn't been called i've been waiting all this time they just came out and said we are going to lunch we're going to be gone for an hour and uh if your number doesn't get called by five o'clock then you're not getting your paperwork done today for me to be a dealer in north carolina I have to have my license renewed. I have to get this paperwork done. And I drove two and a half hours today to come get this paperwork done. And uh, I'm not mad that they're going on lunch. I'm No problem, no problem. Can we have more than one person actually doing the paperwork so a lunch break doesn't affect whether or not a dealer in North Carolina. Now, I'm only two and a half hours away from, from Raleigh. But if a dealer that's five hours away wants to get their license renewed here, then they could find themselves in the similar type of circumstance that I'm in right now. Can we not have a lunch break affect whether or not someone has to drive all the way back to the Capitol? Can we have a different system? Can we do this locally? I, this, is, this is not for this channel. No, this is not what I cover. This is not car market related. This is, this is, I'm being selfish right now. I want you to hear about this because I want to talk about it. And I hope someone from North Carolina hears about this because this is what a dealer has to go through in North Carolina. And if you want to see dealers suffering, just, there you go. That's what a lot of you like to see. You like to see dealers getting crushed. Use a lot of these taglines, titles, and stuff that we all use in the car market, and they work because you like to hear about them. Well, you know what? This is a title right here on my face. It's miserable. I don't cuss on my channel. I want to so bad. I want to tell you about it. I want to tell you about it, about what I'm actually thinking in my head. There's lots of lots of curse words. My son could not watch this video back if I actually said what I wanted to say right now. Anyway, thank you.